Hi everyone and welcome to this very exciting video. So in this video, we are going to solve problems that are important for the effect exam. So if you are appearing for effect exam, you should ideally watch this video just before the exam, just to recap the concept. We are going to focus specifically on numericals. So like calculation type questions that you could be asked in the exam. Okay, so let's start with it. Each question try to pause it, solve it and then see the recording for solutions. Okay, so solve it on your own first and then try to look for the answers. So the first question, okay, I'm going to read the question then explain the solution. So what is happening? Your client has a house that is valued at 800,000 on which there is a mortgage of 470,000 and she has an investment portfolio of 90,000, 97,000 and a credit line of 45,000. She has a car that is worth 35,000 and a car loan that is worth 27,000. They're asking you what is the approximate net worth. So conceptually, what is net worth? The total asset that your client has minus total liabilities that your client has. So we have to first distinguish assets, distinguish liabilities and then take the difference so if you look at the solution so house is an asset 800,000 investment portfolio is an asset 97,000 car is an asset 35,000 so the total assets are 932,000 dollars now mortgage is 470,000 credit line is 45,000 and car loan is 27,000 so these are all liabilities. So the total liabilities are $542,000. The difference between the two is the net worth. So $390,000 is the net worth. $390,000 is the net worth. That's the answer. <clears throat> second question. The second question is, Harry had receive, has received a dividend of $1,000 sorry, interest income of $1,000. So type of income is interest, okay, from his bond portfolio in a non-registered account. So no exemptions, no tax-free status. If his tax rate is 35%, what will be his taxes? Now, first of all, it is an interest type of income. Interest is completely taxed. There are no exemptions. There are no dividend tax credits or anything on interest income. So straight away, if you look at solution, interest income is $1,000, the tax rate is 35%. So taxes are simply multiplication of the two. 1,000 into 35, that is $350 is the taxes. Question number three. Harry has received $1,000 of dividend income from a stock portfolio in a non-registered account. So no tax-free status. If his tax rate is 35%, what will be his taxes? Now, important point, it is not interest income, it is dividend income. So dividend income will always have dividend tax credit. So how do we do that? So question three, if you see, dividend received is $1,000, tax rate is 35%, that is given to us. Step number one, gross up the dividend. So how do we gross it up? We multiply the dividend, $1,000, into 1.38 so that is grossed up dividend okay so step number one is grossing it up grossing it up step number two calculate taxes on grossed up dividend so this grossed up dividend thousand into 1.38 that you calculated you calculate taxes on that so 1380 times 35 percent is the taxes 483 dollars so that is the taxes that white that would be due but you also get a dividend tax credit so how do you calculate the dividend tax credit so it is grossed up dividend into 15.08 that is the tax credit percentage so 208.104 is the tax credit difference between taxes and credit is the actual taxes that you have to pay that is almost 275 dollars so step number one, gross up the dividend. Step number two, take the, like calculate the taxes based on the tax rate mentioned. Step number three, calculate the dividend tax credit at 15.08% and difference between the two is the taxes that you have to pay. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर हैरी हैज रिसीव थाउजेंड डॉलर्स ऑफ कैपिटल गेन फ्रॉम अ स्टॉक पोर्टफोलियो इन अ नॉन रजिस्टर्ड अकाउंट हिज टैक्स रेट इज थर्टी फाइव परसेंट वॉट विल बी हिज टैक्सेस तो हाउ डू वी कैलकुलेट दैट ना सिंस इट इज कैपिटल गेन ओनली हाफ ऑफ इट इज टैक्सेबल सो हाफ ऑफ कैपिटल गेन मीन्स फाइव हंड्रेड डॉलर्स आउट ऑफ थाउजेंड इज टैक्सेबल यू हैव टू पे थर्टी फाइव परसेंट टैक्स ऑन द टैक्सेबल कैपिटल गेन सो सिंपली मल्टीप्लाई दिस फाइव हंड्रेड डॉलर्स बाई थर्टी फाइव परसेंट हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी फाइव डॉलर्स इज द टैक्सेस सो द आंसर फॉर क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर इज हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी फाइव डॉलर्स क्वेश्चन फाइव ओके सो जस्ट टू रिकैप For every question, try to pause it, try to solve it first, and then see the solution. So, question number five: Harry buys a discounted bond at ninety-eight Canadian dollars for a face value of thousand. If the bond is a semi-annual bond and a coupon rate is five percent, the yield to maturity is six percent. What would be the coupon payment on this bond? Coupon payment is always calculated as the coupon percentage divided by 2 because semi annual into face value so if you see the solution the coupon payment is coupon percentage 5% divided by 2 because it is semi annual bond into the face value 1000 so the coupon payment is actually 250 dollars <throat> question number 6 6 harry buys a discount bond At ninety eight dollars for a face value of thousand. If the bond is a semi annual bond and the coupon rate is five percent and the yield to maturity is six percent, what is the maturity amount? Maturity amount that you get on a bond is always the face value. So ten thousand dollars is the face value. That is the maturity payment that Harry is going to get. So it is ten thousand dollars. Okay, question number eight. I guess one question got missed out. Okay, next question. I think one question got skipped out. Question number seven. In while I was editing it, but question number seven was asking with the same details. What is the price of the bond? So ninety eight dollars was given. He ninety eight is. Ninety eight dollars you are paying for every hundred dollars. So the bond face value is ten thousand dollars. So ninety eight percent of ten thousand dollars would be the price of the bond that you pay ninety eight hundred. So in the question, if they are asking you instead of maturity amount, the price of the bond that will be ninety eight for every hundred. So ninety eight percent of ten thousand that is ninety eight hundred will be the price of the bond. That question got hidden somehow. I don't know. How? Okay, <clears throat> so we'll solve the question eight. Question eight: A five-year nine percent bond trading at hundred and five would most likely have a current yield of. They are asking you current yield. Current yield is always the coupon rate nine divided by bond price hundred and five. So if you see the solution, current yield is always. Nine dollars divided by hundred and five. That will be the current yield on the bond. Next is a five-year semi-annual bond, nine percent coupon is trading at hundred and five. What would be the most likely yield to maturity? Now, if you are asked to calculate yield to maturity, there is a you have to use the financial calculator for doing it. I have done it in Excel, so I use the rate function. So type in like use the compounding function in your calculator. Key in uh, number of years as five into two because it's a semi annual bond. Five years is the maturity. So five into two that is the n per number of periods. And then coupon payment is nine divided by two because it's a semi annual bond. So nine is the yearly payment divided by two. The present value will be the bond price. Hundred and five, negative hundred and five. Maturity amount will be hundred, right? And type of the bond is always zero. So that is the first part. Multiply it by two to get yield to maturity. So whenever you are asked to calculate yield to maturity, 
right first of all use the compound function in your calculator n per will be 5 into 2 5 years bond but it is a semi-annual bond so into 2 coupon will be 9 divided by 2 that's the payment pv will be negative 105 that's the price you're paying for the bond future value will be 100 right zero will be type of the bond and multiplied by two to get yield to maturity so that is 7.77 percent question number 10 harry has bought a three month call option so each uh, contract is 100 shares on td bank the exercise price is 50 the premium is 3 and the stock expires at 60 so call option benefits when the expiration happens above the exercise price when the expiration happens above the exercise price so first of all in this contract you're going to get a profit now how do you calculate profit so profit or no call option is nothing but 100 that is the contract size multiplied by the price on expiration 60 minus the price on exercise 50 minus that's the contract profit minus you're paying a premium premium paid is never returned so minus three times hundred so that is seven hundred dollars will be your profit seven hundred dollars will be your profit because it's a call option okay so answer is seven hundred <clears throat> question number 11 so harry has bought a three month put contract now put contract benefits if the price goes down put contract loses money if the price goes up okay just the basics Exercise price is 50, premium is 3, and the price goes up to 60. So you're going to make a loss. Whenever the price goes up, you make a loss. What is the loss? So loss on a put contract is always the contract loss or the premium paid, whichever is lower. So contract loss is 100 into 50 minus 60. That's the put contract loss or the premium paid that is 3 into 100 that is 300 dollars so in this case the answer is you're going to have a loss of 300 300 dollars loss okay next is question number 12 harry has bought a three month put contract exercise price was 50 premium was 3 and the price went down to 40 Whenever price goes down, you make a profit. How much profit would you make? So profit is $100 into exercise price minus expiration price, 50 minus 40 in minus the premium paid, 3 into 100. That is $700 profit. Okay. So if you are getting confused, I'm just like running through because I assume that you have watched all the chapters, you have studied all the chapters from the book. So you know how to calculate it. So this is a recap video. So I'm not going into details of each and everything. So if you want, you can pause it and watch this again of how I'm solving and try to make your own notes. Okay. 13th one. Harry has invested in a government bond maturing at $100. He has bought a bond at 98 and is expected to get a coupon of 4. How much is the expected return on the bond? So what, are, what is he going to get this year? $4 coupon, right? Plus $100 of maturity amount. So he's going to get in total 104. How much did he invest to get 104? 98 bucks. So if you see the solution, it is going to be 104, 100 plus four dollars coupon divided by 98 minus one. So the expected return is 6.12% on this bond. Okay, that's how you calculate expected return. The cash flow plus maturity amount divided by the whole thing divided by the total amount you invest. Question 14, Harry is looking at TD stock. The stock is trading at 90.89, right? 
the analyst expect it to go to 101.24 in a year's time if it gives an dividend of 3.84 what is the expected return on td now how do we calculate expected return on td same way cash flow plus maturity amount divided by how much you invested at so if you see answer it will be 101.24 maturity amount of the stock plus 3.84 the dividend of the stock divided by 90.89 the price at which you bought it minus 1 so it is 15.61 15.61 okay <clears throat> question number 15 harry invested thousand dollars in an equity mutual fund if the fund after fees provides a return of 10 percent 8 percent 7 percent 3 percent negative and 15 percent how much will he have in his account now how do you solve such kind of problems so always start with the principal thousand then multiply it by one plus year one return multiply that by one plus year two return year three year four year five you will get the maturity amount so if you see the solution of it so it will be ten thousand dollars the principal multiplied by one plus ten percent multiplied by one plus eight percent multiplied by one plus seven percent multiplied by one minus three percent negative returns uh, because one year was negative so negative three percent and finally one plus fifteen percent so principal into one plus year one year two year three year four and year five you get a 14179 as the amount that's the answer your account will have 14,179 okay the next question we'll try to solve in the next part so I'm going to divide it into three parts part number one 15 questions part number two again 15 questions and part number three the last 20 questions there are 50 questions in total so thank you for attending in the next class we'll see the rest of it this these all questions are inspired from the question bank that i have created so if you are interested i'm sharing the description of the question bank the question bank has over 500 plus questions that you can practice for the exam okay